what a year it has been. I got married, I got promoted, I saw other friends get married and promoted, but I was also lucky enough to have read a ton of books. I didn't quite beat my word count from last year, but given how busy my year was with a wedding and all, I'm definitely proud of how much I was able to get through, especially for the upcoming year of Sanderson, where we'll be getting five books from the insane author. Although he has stated that together the five books are about the length of a Stormlight Archive book, so it's a pretty normal amount of Brandon for 2023. Either way, I'm hyped and can't wait to share my ranking with you all, but first, here are my 2022 metrics. I read a total of 2,604,878 words, with January, June, and July being my best reading months, all just shy of 250,000 words. I read 15 and a half books, still haven't quite finished Jurassic Park The Lost World yet, as well as three novellas and three short stories. My largest books were The Well of Ascension, the second book in Mistborn Era 1 by Brando Sando himself, Jade Legacy, the third book in the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, and The Dragon Reborn, the third book of the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. And these all sit around 240 to 245,000 words. If you're new to the channel or this video series, here is how I ranked my 7 book reads after the first half of the year. I have 8 books to add here today as I exclude the short stories and novellas for these tier lists. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on these first 7, do be sure to check out my part 1, which I'll link on the screen and in the description below. But enough talk, let's get started. Coming in at the very bottom, below Grave Peril, is going to be The Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Album. Before Brandon Sanderson, before I ever really read fantasy at all, besides Harry Potter, Mitch Album was my favorite author, and The Five People You Meet in Heaven is still one of my favorite books to this day. I was really looking forward to picking this one up and continuing the story, and I made a real effort to make sure that that happened this year. And for the most part, it works really well. Album has a talent for writing super simplistically, and yet drawing you in with every chapter, creating real page turners that are quick to read and impossible to put down. I do think this one was a tad weaker than the first and a little bit more predictable, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't enjoyable. It is certainly worth your time if these are your types of books. But moving on, surpassing all the other books in the B tier, we have The Alloy of Law, book 4 in the Mistborn series and the first of Era 2 to be more specific, topping off the tier. I really enjoyed Era 2 in general. They are half the length of the Era 1 books, but still deliver a great amount of action, mystery, and fun. The characters are super entertaining and likable, and while the stakes take time to build, they're still filled with crazy revelations and epic moments. I think the Alloy of Law is the weakest of Era 2, but it is most certainly not weak. It is the shortest and has the sole purpose of introducing us to the new and improved world of Scadrial, a new cast of characters, new implications within its magic system, and a new threat. It's short and sweet, but filled with one of the better mysteries of Era 2 in my opinion, making it a very rewarding read. However, first up within the A tier for today, sitting between Jade War and Jade Legacy, I have Jurassic Park. Michael Crichton has a special talent for entertaining you while educating you. In a lot of ways, his books feel more like feats of research and being able to articulate said research than a feat of story or character, but Jurassic Park is a standout for a reason. It offers scientific literature that sheds light on the debates within archaeology, mathematics, and philosophy, and it elaborates on them, offering a very fun and engaging sci-fi techno-thriller as a case study for these academic subjects. The end result is as thrilling as it is educational, and while its characters aren't my favorite, its story, its horror, and its lessons made this page turner very hard to put down. But moving past it and Jade Legacy, I have book 3 within the Wheel of Time series, The Dragon Reborn. In a lot of ways, this book is as misleading as it is satisfying. You'd imagine a book about the Dragon Reborn would focus on the Dragon Reborn, but instead it focuses on some other major characters within the series, bringing them into the spotlight and providing tons of reasons to care for them and become more invested in their parts of the story. And at the same time, it still does offer a ton more prophecies and theories and information on what and who the Dragon Reborn really is. The adventure in here was probably my favorite of the first three books, especially the part of the girls, Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine, and the ending really excites me for the future of this series. But moving past this, as well as the first book of the Greenbone Saga, Jade City, I have Brandon Sanderson's first ever published book, and a Cosmere book nonetheless, Elantris. 
I really did not have high hopes for this novel. I was expecting an amateur style prose and plot structure from a young Sanderson, as I was told to expect by his very fans, but oh my god, if this is considered Sanderson's worst within the fandom, it only strengthens my faith in him as an author because this is better than what a lot of fantasy authors would consider their best. Yes, it's still obviously very much a Sanderson book. It has his tricks, his style of writing, his banter within dialogue, his plotting, and it is all less refined than his later books, but I don't think the argument that his later books do it all better holds a ton of weight. I think this one still has a lot going for it that makes it special within the Cosmere, and I certainly recommend it. I'll be sharing my thoughts a bit more on this one with a two minute book review, but I just wanted to let you all know where I stand on it. Moving on up and passing the third book in Mistborn the Hero of Ages, I have the fifth book, aka the second within Era 2, Shadows of Self. Now, in case you haven't seen my Mistborn ranking from last month, Shadows of Self being over Hero of Ages really just boils down to its reward per investment required, or in other words, how satisfying the read is given how long the book is. And Shadows of Self is a riveting read that offers something new within the franchise. It's a murder mystery, fast-paced political thriller that pushes the envelope for its characters, pitting them against their deepest, darkest fears. It really gets down and dirty within the mindset of its characters, and by the end, it delivers a real emotional punch that will connect you even further with its protagonists. The villain is also far scarier than the first, and the themes are really strong with this book. It's a tad longer than the Alloy of Law, but it still manages to read faster given its pacing. And yet, above it, I have the Bands of Mourning, the sixth book in the Mistborn series. Bands of Mourning continue the narrative from Shadows of Self quite well, but felt a ton more balanced while doing so. The world building is addressed further here, taking us out of Elendel and into new territories. The magic system is expanded upon with new technology as the world continues to progress. The characters and the relationships are also further developed, especially those involving Steris, who has a much bigger part to play here, which I absolutely loved. It feels like a great ending, and yet also a perfect setup for the last book within Era 2, which is also my top pick from my 2022 reads. That's right, topping off this tier list, the lone book sitting in my S tier is The Lost Metal. Similarly to last year's tier list where the Final Empire Mistborn Book 1 was the only one to reach the S tier, The Lost Metal caps off the first two eras with a tremendous bang. I just recently put out a review for it, so check that out if you're curious, but overall, this book was just so much damn fun. The story does a great job at juggling its contained components, where it focuses on our main four, Wax, Wayne, Marisi, and Steris, and also its Cosmere components as tons of things start to cross over. This book really proves the relevance and provides true implications for the Cosmere as its bigger players start to make real strides against their opponents. This is the end of Mistborn Era 2, but it also feels like the beginning of Cosmere Era 1, as things really do feel that huge, without sacrificing anything from its characters or story within Era 2. But that's just my list, and I would love to hear what you guys were able to read this year. If you're not much of a reader but still enjoy these videos, I would love to hear what your top 5 TV shows or top 5 movies were as well. I love it all, and I want to hear it all from you guys down in the comments below. I hope your year was filled with more good than bad, and I hope 2023 proved to be a great year with great strides for you all. Personally, I'm really looking forward to the new year and have tons of goals for myself. And as far as books go, I've got a lot of planned ones that I'm really excited about, including the year of Sanderson, but also some other series I've been itching to go back to, as well as ones that I've been itching to start. I shared my plan TBR for 2023 on Instagram, which you can check out using the handle in the description below. But that's enough from me. As always, wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time.